This is Robert Higgs at Barren Ridge Vineyards. We're doing a live tasting today. It's a little bit windy and I'm just looking at my phone. I see some people are watching. Ashley Huyard and Tim Belton. Thanks, Tim. Always appreciate you watching these videos. And Ashley, glad you're on there. There's probably a few more people on there. I'm gonna lower my phone so I can't hear myself talking. So I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. There's still a little bit left. Sunday afternoon, it got too windy. We like to do these outside, but we're inside today. And we're tasting three silver medal winners from uh, the Governor's Cup. These are the silver medal winners that uh, we submitted to the Governor's Cup this year uh, for the 2021. And there's some excellent wines in Virginia. The Virginia Wine Board started a, a gold medal trail. So there's a gold medal trail. We actually had some people come there, come here over the weekend and taste our wines uh, for that reason. So that was probably a good idea. Um, and you know, contests, uh, contests are great, uh, but they're also subjective and the real, you know, really just want to get out and try people's wine and find what you like and gravitate towards that and discover the different areas of Virginia, discover the microclimates like we have here at Barren Ridge in a semi-arid microclimate, discover our terroir, discover why the Shenandoah Valley is different than other Appalachians or what we call AVAs, American Viticultural Areas, and just see what's different. And you know, each winery is different. There's probably something fun and unique about each one. And here we're authentic, welcoming. We're a pretty small winery with 15 acres of vines. And we're really focused on making really high quality dry wines. And that's what we do. We try to get what's in our vineyard, what's in our soils into the glass with uh, not too much interference. And hopefully make things that you like drinking and show you a good time uh, for you all to relax have a nice moment and have a nice experience. And hopefully as things open up, we'll have some fun experiences together again. So, and we have great music on Saturdays. So definitely come and check out our music on Saturdays. We have beautiful, beautiful music on Saturdays and we'll probably expand that in the future. But now let's get to the tasting. So we're tasting uh, Tinkling Spring. This is our uh, dry white blend uh, from 2019. Petit Verdot 2017 and our Christoph Ice Wine 2019. So first of all, Tinkling Spring. This is our signature blend. Beautiful blend. The blend changes a little bit from year to year. This year it's composed of three wines being Vidal Blanc, Riesling, and a little bit of Tremonet. Can't overdo it on the Tremonet, but I'll talk about that later. And this is a nice, uh, has, features a nice label uh, featuring P. Buckley Moss artwork uh, of Tinkling Spring. And we donate to her children's art foundation with each purchase of a bottle of this wine. And she's local, she's a very famous artist uh, nationally uh, and regionally. And she's been a great partner. And uh, so we're very happy to have this beautiful artwork on our label and I already have some in the glass. Uh, the idea for this wine actually came from my father who had a friend who was living in uh, west of here, in west of Stanton, and they didn't have a refrigerator. Uh, this was back in the day. And they basically had a spring that kept all of their, all of their food cold. And um, this, uh, my dad described this mountain spring as being the best water he has ever tasted. Uh, it's full of wild herbs uh, like watercress and wild mint and things like that. And you do find wild springs out here towards the mountains with beautiful water if you taste them. Most people don't taste them now because it's not always safe. But uh, he, he tasked our winemakers at the time to make a wine uh, in line with those ideas of a crisp mountain stream and just uh, beautiful fresh water with, full, of, full of flavor. And that's what they came up with. And so this, this wine has a double name. Tinkling Spring is an area near here, near Fishersville. It's also a church where my parents and my sister got married. And it's featured uh, in a few different uh, people like in Buckley Moss paintings. So it has kind of a double meaning. Anyway, so cheers. Hope you're all well. And here's to Tinkling Spring.
has a beautiful aromatic nose. This wine's still a little bit closed, it's a little bit cold, but you, at different times, at different temperatures, and with different foods, uh, it's great because this wine marries very well with different foods. Being a blend, it's always interesting. Um, because the different components will come out depending on what you pair it with. Uh, so the Riesling, Vidal Blanc, and Traminette will show themselves at different times. This one, you know, I smell some, some, some flintiness and some lime and green apple, and that may be coming from the Riesling. And some beautiful, more ripe fruit, kind of like vineyard peach, and that's likely coming from the Vidal Blanc, and there's some aromatic notes that remind me of Traminette. And I'll talk about that later, but a nice blend, a nice complex nose. It's, it's an easy drinking wine, but at the same time, there's good complexity. So in a way, it's kind of a gourmet wine and an easy drinking wine at the same time because it tastes good. It's full of fruit, but there's good acidity, good crispness, good structure, and there's many different flavor profiles. And having said all that, at the same time, it's well integrated. So it's kind of an amazing little wine. And there's a whole bouquet of nice spices in there, too. So really de delicious, come give it a try sometime if you haven't. <clears throat> delicious wine. It's great as you're tasting wine leave it in your mouth and get some air in there because you'll really discover aromas that you will not detect otherwise. Um, so as you, as you kind of continue your journey on learning about wine, if you're comfortable with it, really leave it in your mouth for a while, let it touch all the different parts of your palate uh, all around your mouth, get some air in there and discover these different aromas because you might miss that there's some juicy notes of tangerine on the tip of the tongue or something that may not be there if you just really have it in your mouth a short time and swallow it. Also pleasant, but it's really interesting if you give it a little time. Anyway, the wine tastes delicious. It has very crisp, clean notes up front, uh, very clear citrus, some minerality, and I still have some light spices dancing on my tongue, some white pepper and things like that. So it tastes really delicious, uh, really beautiful. And then you get some more developed notes in the mid palate, some, some of these riper fruits like vineyard peach, and things like that. And then it finishes clean and fresh and you get some of these juicy tangerine notes. There's a little green apple in there. It has quite long flavors. Uh, they're still developing in my mouth. So it's been 15, 20 seconds already. So very long. And we tend to have good length uh, in our wines here at the vineyard. They, they, they finish well and they have long aromas and flavors. And hopefully that's due to um, our vineyard site and also quality wine production and just uh, doing the best we can with what we get here. So, very good wine. Now we go to the Petit Verdot 2017. Uh, this is really an excellent wine. Um, I think it's really at a sweet spot in its evolution. Sometimes uh, wines hit a point uh, where they're moving from primary flavors and secondary flavors, primary being directly from the vineyard, the fruit right off the vine, uh, those kind of fresh flavors, to uh, secondary flavors being from winemaking and barrel and things like that. And then tertiary flavors are the flavors developed with aging. And I think this one's hit the sweet spot going from primary and secondary flavors to the tertiary flavors, but still being fresh and pretty youthful and maybe just getting some more complexity from the tertiary flavors in the wine. And um, it's something to think about, but uh, in each wine's evolution, maybe there's a sweet spot and that sweet spot can last for a long time. And I think we're somewhere near there because this wine is drinking very complex. Uh, it tastes perfect. Uh, it's honestly, it's, it's one of the, it's, it's fantastic wine right now. It's worth trying. Uh, it doesn't matter, silver medal, gold medal. It's just a really good wine. So it's worth coming out and giving it a try. And Petit Verdot is really a great grape in Virginia. Uh, not many places on the planet produce um, Petit Verdot as a varietal. 100% Petit Verdot in the bottle is very rare in the world, but there's a lot in Virginia. Uh, I think I think Veritas was in the governor's case for Petit Verdot, which is fantastic. So get out and try Petit Verdot. It's very unique in Virginia. 
uh, over in the Monticello Appalachian. It's going to taste different here than in, in the valley and different at Barren Ridge than anywhere else. And it does really well here, so come give it a try. And let's see. Just say hello to a couple people. Pamela Littick, hello. Quite a few people. Alice Kessler, Keister, Patty Ann Denman, Amelia Scholl Heiner, Pam Duane, McLaughlin, uh, Pamela Littick, I think I said that before, Mary Sproles Martin, I have to refresh my memory who that is, Jean Hall, Lena L. Curry, Roombarger, that's a lovely name, and Alexandra Usherwitz, uh, and apologize if I didn't mention your name, I might not see everybody, Tucker Hobie, Virginia Wine Guy, appreciate that. Kimberly Mahon, Randy Coleman, Tim Belton is almost always there. It's nice to have a nice crowd. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all uh, paying attention. And we barely advertise what we're doing this week. I was supposed to uh, post it on Facebook earlier and got stuck uh, out in the vineyard and doing some stuff here. So I'm kind of like tired and worked hard and uh, I didn't get to put out the Facebook post. So we love having so many of you out here despite that. Uh, anyway, so we're going to taste the Petit Verdot now. There's some signature things that tell you it's a Petit Verdot. And some of it, you know, there's some specific things on the nose. Earthy, plummy fruit. Uh, dense fruit, a little bit smoky. Uh, Tariga can be also a little bit smoky too, but this is also uh, smoky. Sometimes smoky presents itself as minerality, so it smells nice smoky fruit. There's some floral notes uh, really dancing out of the glass. You can imagine them just, you know, the floral notes just coming out of the glass like this. Uh, smells like violet to me. And there's a little bit of, um, of licorice. So really some interesting notes. And there's a, whole, there's a whole panoply of different spices in there. So it smells really good. It makes you want to go eat something or pair with it or just have a sip. Uh, but it smells absolutely fantastic with all these floral notes and the spices and the fruit and the smoke. You really have something complex. It almost it almost says I'm chewy. You kind of want to go in the glass and chew on something. So let's let's see how how the palate tastes. And there's also one last thing. There's there's often with our red wines here. Um, our red wines here at Barren Ridge, there's often a floral component. Uh, you, you, you clearly get it in Cabernet Franc sometimes, and sometimes in Petit Verdot. And I'm getting uh, that, that floral com component like I mentioned before. And also something that's kind of mentholated sometimes. Sometimes it can present itself as eucalyptus or uh, rosemary, wild rosemary when you rub it, or uh, wild sage, things like that, uh, bay leaf. Uh, when you rub them, you get this kind of methylated uh, feeling. Uh, there's quite often a little note of that in our wine, so it's something to look for. And it adds some complexity. You know, you can imagine if you're having a nice steak marinated in rose, rosemary or something like that, that this wine will pick up on that little note and you'll have something extraordinary. So let's give it a try. Absolutely delicious. There's still some tannins there. They're getting softer over time uh, with that bottle aging, you know, a good three years in the bottle by now. Um, and, you know, it looks, it smells really dense and intense. The intensity is there. It's not super overwhelmingly heavy on the palate because our wines stay lighter. That acidity keeps them light and fresh. So it doesn't overwhelm you like a big syrupy wine or a wine full of uh, baked fruit or marmalade, things like that. It's not like that. Our wines tend to stay lighter. Our red wines tend to stay lighter. Uh, they're long, they're ageable. That acidity helps them with their length and their age. It helps the aromatics and it's just a nice structure. It holds the whole wine together. And then you get you know, everything I described on the nose is all there on the palate at the same time. I'm still tasting these these very pleasant notes of uh, of bay leaf or that wild plant I mentioned that I can't exactly say exactly what it is. 
and these smoky fruits, uh, there's, there's a little bit of red and black fruits. There's like some, uh, they're a little bit wild. They can be a little bit wild, these wines. Um, so always think of wild fruits, like wild blackberries, wild raspberries. But at the core, there's a lot of smoky, plummy fruit in these wines. There's some uh, clear cinnamon stick and things like that. Anyway, it's a complex wine. It's, it's very delicious. It's earthy. Uh, it's quite bold and big, a little bit rustic, but just fantastic. Uh, it's really become a favorite here, and I'm, I'm sure people are really discovering or rediscovering Petit Bordeaux because it's really fantastic here in Virginia. And it's the Virginia red, red grape also. So, super good wine. Renee Miller Lap, a couple other people. Bill Porboff, just saw Bill here on the second floor yesterday. Old friend of my father's. Hi, Bill. Hope you're doing well. I uh, hope you're both doing well. Uh, Michael Drury, Michael Carlton, Elizabeth Wiseman. Uh, there's some new names out there. I don't know everybody. You're always welcome to come say hello. Uh, our team, you know, there's always people here. We fed a pretty consistent team, especially over the last year. Angela's almost always in the tasting room and we're all here doing it together our little team and we're trying to Do the best we can here at the vineyard and With our little team to keep people happy. All right, so we're gonna to move to the final wine now. This is Christoph made in 2019 Beautiful nice elegant long bottle Named after our first winemaker Christoph Weibler sometimes he's watching Guten Abend, Christoph, if you're out there. He's on there sometimes. So a nice, elegant bottle. And this is our ice wine. So this is made from uh, grapes that are frozen. And when you process the grapes, uh, the, 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 the frozen stuff uh, goes out. Um, so the frozen water and everything that you don't want to keep goes out of the wine. And what you're left with is a very concentrated uh, uh, a nectar, really, uh, concentrated nectar uh, of uh, beautiful, rich uh, grape juice with a very high sugar content. And so that's, that's how we process those, those dessert wines that we make. And so this is an ice wine style made here in Virginia. And this is made from Vidal Blanc and Traminette. And it's a nice combination. You get some nice acidity to balance out this wine. So it's a dessert wine, but it's not overly he heavy. Uh, and it can pair with uh, many different types of desserts and other things and it really has a profound nose I haven't smelled it yet here on on the video, but even even from this distance uh, you get this uh, beautiful wa wafting uh, rose petal like if you ever if you ever cook a lot uh, if you cook with rose water and things like that just very intense rose and like I said we have that in our, a lot of our wines here some of the reds but the Treminette really gets this 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 rose petal, uh, honey and rose petal notes that really come out of the glass and it's really beautiful. And you get a little bit of citrus and a little bit of exotic fruits. Um, it's still a little cold. You're probably gonna get those more on the palate or they'll come out when you, when you actually pair it with something. But wines like this are really good with salty cheeses like blue cheese. Uh, things like foie gras if you're really celebrating and um, uh, of course fruity desserts anything with caramel like uh, flavors uh, uh, caramel with uh, salt like sea salt these kind of flavors go perfectly with this type of wine uh, peach melba uh, apple pie, <coughs> apple pie apple pie and ice cream it also tastes delicious just uh, poured you know, and drizzled over ice cream or to make a reduction sauce for a, a dessert. And you know, it's worth experimenting. This, this'll, this'll go with a lot of different types of desserts. Um, I'm talking about fruit now because it's, it definitely pairs well with fruits. And, uh, but there's a lot of other things it can go with. So pecan pie, certainly things like that. So anyway, enjoy Christoph 2019. Cheers to our Civil Medal winners and cheers to everybody in the Virginia wine industry working hard to make good wine. Everybody who got accolades in uh, the current Governor's Cup and just acknowledge everybody that's interested in making high quality wine and treating people nicely and creating nice experiences for people. So uh, hopefully you're getting that everywhere here in this uh, beautiful 
uh, state of Virginia and out here in the Shenandoah Valley. And it's our new home, so we love it here. And cheers. So I wish you a good end of the weekend. Uh, you guys are always online. I think you could always uh, shoot in a question if you wanted to. Uh, so feel free. And uh, I see that there's uh, Julie Nicely Butch Williams watching. Very nice to have you on. Um, you're always welcome to ask questions, and if we don't address them while we're live, we're, we'll get back to them uh, on Facebook later. And we're going to keep, keep developing this series. Uh, next weekend, we'll be uh, doing uh, wine with a recipe, so I'll be picking a pairing. We haven't really picked it yet. We're either thinking something maybe for Easter, since it's getting close to Easter. And then the last week of the month, we always do a cheese and wine pairing. And we'll be doing the Meritage with Manchego this month. We will advertise that. You're welcome to pick up a Meritage in Manchego and uh, enjoy that on the last uh, Sunday of the month. And we'll continue this series called Live at Five every Sunday at Five. And we appreciate seeing a lot of your faces. We appreciate seeing you online and wish you a beautiful week. See you out at the vineyard sometime and have a beautiful Sunday evening. Thanks a lot. We appreciate everything that you do for us. You all be well, be safe, and speak to you soon. Bye-bye.